She comes down originally to do some sparring with Rosie Sexton, one of the previous female fighters that used to be at the gym. And when Molly comes, she was just a boxer. It must be about eight, eight, nine years ago. Uh, I had another female fighter in the UFC, Rosie Sexton. I needed some sparring training partners for her, and someone on the team recommended at the time that I go speak to the, the girl who boxes from Subway. I worked at Subway. I was a sandwich artist. I used to smell like meatballs and hib and cheese bread. Imagine nine hour shifts and then going to train in the gym. It was rough, but yeah, Molly the meatball. When Molly first turned up at the gym, proper little scouser, you know what I mean? Uh, yeah, I think she came to the gym in like 2012. And I said to her, if you've ever fancy getting to MMA, hit me up. She had a will, never heard anything from her. And then I got an email off her saying... I've been to the gym on a few occasions to spar Rosie. I'm a female boxer who used to work with Fishy and Danny. After watching the UFC last night and seeing that Ronda Rousey, I want to start coming along. Will I be able to come down tomorrow, Monday? And does Rosie still train? Molly Mach. That's how it started from that email. I'd been to the gym. Paddy had a, had a, a zero, a buzz cut and braces back then. She was game to jump in. She jumped in the sparring and sparred the lads. And um, from there, you could just see she's like a natural fighter. She comes down and she was just giving it to all the lads. We ain't hold them back. I've always known she's got the potential to reach the highest level. I can pretty much tell when someone comes in into the gym and we start working where the ceiling is, and a lot of it is based upon drive. Molly is someone that's like put a lot of time into raising herself, invested her own time into sports, gone to university herself. She's a very, very driven woman. I don't really come from much, and I just think I just seen a lot of struggle, and it just really gave me drive and purpose to try and surpass them and try and do better to provide for them. I knew that when I started martial arts, I didn't have the time behind me. I didn't have the hours of training. So what I had to give more was this. It was blind faith because my weight wasn't in the UFC. Women had only just started properly. So the kind of avenue for me to be a UFC fighter wasn't even there, but I just had this blind bit of faith I could do it. So her opponent is Erin Blanchfield. Erin is very, very good, very highly touted as being like one of the next big things in the division. Very, very good jiu-jitsu, good wrestling, good striking, very, very aggressive, likes to come forward. You know, she's a very tough test for Molly. She's mainly a jiu-jitsu fighter, so she, I think she's gonna be looking to get Molly down to the ground and try and implement her jiu-jitsu on Molly. She also fancies herself a bit of a psyche, which I hope she does come and fancy herself a bit of a psyche with Molly, because Molly will knock her out. I think it's very, very much going to be a, a striking match to start out with, and then I think Erin's going to look to try and get the takedown, and it's going to be on Molly to kind of stop her doing that. And if Molly gets past Erin and finishes her the way that I think that she's going to, the sky's the limit, and it will be a clear run until we hit the Valentina. I'll let you roll, and then I'm going to defend. We're just running through the grappling portion of the uh, the fight. We know that Erin's a very good grappler. Um, we've been preparing for Molly's side of that, like a lot of defensive stuff, a lot of get-ups, a lot of countering, some attacks, um, a lot of takedown defense work, so we've been working on that for the fight. Just running through all the little bits she's been working in a wall defense and a, a bad, bad, uh, bad position that she could end up in a fight, so she's just working on keeping herself safe, getting up safe, not giving her back making that space, looking to land that hellbow. She looks fantastic, she looks really, really good. You know, um, Erin's obviously a black belt in jiu-jitsu, but for MMA, you don't need all of the elements of jiu-jitsu that would make you a black belt. You need to be a black belt at like some areas, and, and you can be a white belt in other areas. So that's what we're trying to do, put Molly to be in a black belt in some of the areas she needs. Nice. My grappling has always had to evolve because it was the last thing I had to learn. I just feel it, it my striking's very superior and I think that the grappling is just there. It'd be good just to show I can have a, I can disengage grappling if it comes to that and just silence the haters really. Do that, because that's a special move. Is there Erin that's a special move? I don't think she's gonna be able to take Molly down. That's that's the main thing in this fight here, not getting put on the bottom and staying on the bottom. I know for a fact that Molly keeps it standing, she knocks it out. Sorry about my tardiness. What's going on? <laughs> Stoolies, look. That's what Drake got me. My little 
little bit. Oh, thank you. This is a bit better. Very nice. But I said to Paddy, went, let me off this one. I said, because you sign million pound deals all the time. <laughs> <laughs> it just started laughing. <laughs> well, I think this is my fourth or fifth whack on Chat and Pony. Yeah, it's your second on your own, isn't it? And you, because we've done a Vegas one and a London one, so it's your second on your own. First recurring guest. guest. What is going down the firm? We're back in studio. Always love having an in-house guest, just know that. Introduce yourself, girl. I'm um, um, Paddy the Bazzi's friend. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're going to lift and you're coming with me. What have we got going on over here? Smoker's Corner. <laughs> Get up. So I went to school here, yeah. <coughs> Liverpool John Moores. I graduated in 2013. It was funny because <clears throat> this gym is only where scholars can go and like all the best of the best and I was never allowed to go there. Um, I didn't get a scholarship or anything. Now they do studies on me. I mean, um, I've like broken all kinds of shit for them. I just stick to the plan. That's all I do. Stick to the plan. Connor! This is the secret lock. <laughs> <laughs> Let me the fuck in! So this is where I do my strength and conditioning. Woo. I'm dying at what this is going to say. I feel claustrophobic in my skin where I'm not fucking hungry just to get in there. I just want to be in there. I just want to experience that walkout and feel that atmosphere. That's all I keep thinking about. If you user record me and I'll be like looking away, that's, I'm like playing that scenario in my brain like oh, I'm going to win and what's everyone going to be like back home in Liverpool, what's it like in Ireland, what's the crowd going to be like in New York. I just these, these moments she dreamed of since she was fucking 10, 11 years of age, all coming to fruition is mental. It took me four years to be balanced. Connor will tell you, the first time I had to do a squat, I was like this. I can't remember who said it, but like one of the best pieces of advice I ever heard was like, but what if it does happen? And when you just believe, oh my God, what happens when that does happen? Which is what has happened the last three fights. It's like, it's just really powerful, do you know what I mean? So I just think, I just imagine that's going to happen and it has done, so I keep dreaming and the dreams come to reality. Ready? Three, two, one, push! Let's go! Keep pulling, keep pulling, keep pulling! Three, two, one! I've got fucking veins like Hannah Gold and coming out of my arms there. <laughs> Jesus, look at that. What do them ones do again, Con? They're pushing the pull. Fire up your nervous system like crazy yeah. because you don't have to worry about being dynamic through it. Yeah. You can just go absolutely 100% effort, yeah. get the whole system firing, yeah. and so that gives us a nice hit. It doesn't burn you out and it doesn't like cause any muscle damage either. Yeah. So we can get all the benefits from it without the negative side of it. Did she like me in veins? How's it come out of my head there? Three, two, one, push! Big push, keep it up, keep it up, Mo. Come on, come on, three, two, one, relax. I'm just thinking of the memes. That's gonna get made on this video. <laughs> <laughs> it's money in the bank. I'm very tired. I'd give a lot today. Um, but yeah, these are the myths. This is the one percent marginal gains you can do to be the best you that you can be. You know, and I proper hated the end of that. That was horrible. And I've literally it's just all at me like a ton of bricks there. Oh, two more sessions tomorrow and then I get a fucking weekend off so just sharpen the tools and then get ready for five weeks so Red Power Ranger today baby Please what's them things in the name Family Guy 
it's that thing at like the American car dealership yeah. where it's like the woo! <laughs> oh, she's always full of energy. She's always bouncing around, full of energy, um, making everyone laugh. It's good to have. Molly is like me big sister. She's like that with everyone in here. We're all, I always say it, next year in the big family. The gym's lively. I think we're always all in camp together. But some days, I think, in a positive way, you want to outshine your training partners and you want to do as best as you can. And I feel like in a healthy way, we all push each other in that way. So we're going to have two for six rounds, I think. My game plan, his game plan, and just try and get our heart rates up as high as we can. But that was just a little warm up, because we'd normally be in there, but not today. Molly always levels up. Camp. This is the best version of Molly that we've had to put out. All the training partners have, have, have agreed with us. She's become a totally, totally different monster. She's looking sharp, she's ready to go. Fight camp's pretty much finished. It's just a case of weighing in and getting to fight right now. I just done like a pre-camp of wrestling and then like four weeks in I done rounds in there with kittens and he had me solved like I mean he fucking I was just crying my eyes out going don't feel sorry for me keep going and he's just fucking he's like just punching the floor and I said to him that was the, the turning point in the camp for me where I just thought I, I'm a given everything and I thought I was and then I just had to go and find some more to give so yeah. I always knew I was fighting for something if I was on the soccer field or the football pitch. I'd always be having a, a scrap or a dirty tackle. This makes Molly special as a fighter. Right there, a heart. Not many women have got a heart like her. When it comes down to it, she's a fighter. She's, um, she's very keen to stand and bang and she's not shy to have a fight. It's a proper honour and a privilege and fighting's not always a right, it's a privilege and I just can't wait to grace that octagon and dance under those lights. For you to say, you know, would you expect Molly to be in there? Absolutely, it would not be a surprise to me for someone to say five years ago that she was being the UFC and ranked. MSG, New York, big pay-per-view, little knockout on a record and MSG, and that'll be her life complete, lad. Obviously, she wants the UFC belt, but she's always wanted to fight in MSG. Yeah, I feel like we got this one right, lads. I feel like I'm ready to go. Look at me now, Mum! <laughs>